How's it going, everybody? This is Be the Bush. This tiny thing right here is actually a thermal camera from Thermal Master called the P2 Pro. Compared to the flare cameras, these are about one tenth the cost, and yet the refresh rate is 25 hertz in these. The flare cameras are usually only nine hertz. I think it's a no brainer. I used to own a flare camera. It comes in this big briefcase thing that I had. I sold it off because it's not as convenient as this little guy. It has a built in app. You can record video within the app, or you can record a screen capture. You're not paying extra for the screen because you already have a screen on your phone. You just plug this in and off you go. You just buy the camera piece itself. There's no battery inside because it uses the battery in your phone. Of course, these guys are not as rugged. It connects to the phone through this lightning port here. Let me unbox this and show you the features in the app to show you the image quality. Thermal master. Thank you card, super tiny. It also comes with a macro lens that doubles as a protective cover. It's held on magnetically, so you just snap it right on. And it's a fully self-contained with a lightning connector. The macro lens itself has a little cover as well, so you can pull this off and use the macro lens normally. Pull this off to use the normal lens. For storage, you just put this right back on, put the macro lens cover on, and it's pretty well protected on its own like this. Let's see what else comes with it. Wow, a quick start guide that's really thick. Only the first 14 pages is English and the rest is in a different language. So it's not really that thick. Here we have some cables. This is a USB-C to lightning connector. So you can still connect it to a USB-C device. Or if you want to snake this little camera around, you can use this lightning to lightning extension cable and connect the camera to one end, your phone to the other end, then you can look at your imaging and move this around in a small space. I think that's all that's in here. This is glued in there. Download and install the Temp Master app. Open it. You can plug in the camera so it faces you or it faces away from you. I'm just gonna do it this way for now. Click next, going through the setup here, next. Then we can go right into the camera view. Remove the front cover, click camera right there. To begin, we can record horizontally or vertically. For the first icon on the left, we can select point sources to measure. I'll select the flashlight, the ice cube, the table, and you can only do three of them. If you tap the fourth one, it's going to remove the first one and then highlight the one that you just selected. I can measure along a line from here to here, and it'll tell me the average along that line, the maximum temperature along that line, and the minimum temperature. Because the line crosses the flashlight, it's saying that it's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. For the line, we can also do three lines. If we do a fourth one, it's gonna delete the first one. And then we can also do a box. Let's say I wanna highlight only the flashlight. There, it would tell you the maximum within that box. Let's do a second box, a third box. And if you do the fourth box, the first one disappears. Then we can add circles to it as well instead of boxes. So I can do a circle around the ice cubes, a circle around you know, the head of the flashlight and on the table. Again, if you do a fourth one, one of them disappears and it's getting a little bit busy there. So most likely you're not gonna have this many measurements. We can change the font color if you have a different background shown. So maybe something very light, like light, light blue. That might be easier to read. And then if we want to remove all of them, we just select delete and it all disappears. The second of the lower icons, you can select which color scheme you want, such as this white hot one, where when it's hot is white, when it's cold, it's black, or you can say black is hot, iron red. Iron is very hot, it becomes kind of yellowish white. It's hot when it's red, rainbow colored, it's hot when it's red, it's cold when it's blue. Jungle, it adds kind of like a darker green tint to everything else. Aurora, where it's kind of like a mix between iron and very cold stuff is very dark. Another scheme called Sita, dim light, gold, lava, and medical. We can go to the center icon now and we can take a picture or record video with audio. So let's say I'm gonna record this. Testing one, two, three, and then stop recording. I can go into the album and then play the video I just recorded. Testing one, two, three. 
and then we can go to the fourth icon there is a transparency mode this is like a picture in picture if you turn it on we can see a full color image on the top left move this around if it's in the way of what we want to see you can slide the slider around to make it very transparent and then on the right there are some settings that you can do on the picture itself like brightness which will just kind of alter the range at which things are hot. And then you have contrast. You can turn the scale on. So you can kind of see, okay, the minimum is 26.9, the maximum is 76.4, and that would be red. We can do mirror of the image here. You can rotate the camera in case there's a certain orientation you prefer to hold your phone at. But I think there's no need to rotate most of the time. On the top bar, there's a thing called X3, which is kind of like a smoothing algorithm where it'll increase the resolution of your image. So if I click that, look at that. It's a lot clearer, wow. Edges are a lot sharper versus if it's off, you can see a lot of grain, a lot of noise. So it does a bit of kind of like smoothing. So we can use two fingers on the image and even zoom in a bit on the hotspot or the cold spot. And you can see on the very bottom, it says your zoom level two and a half x three x five x 15 x that's the maximum right now the temperature range is minus four to 302 fahrenheit i want to go and measure the temperature in this box so the minimum is 26 fahrenheit we have quite a ways to go even lower right now so maybe we can measure some dry ice that'll be even colder and then 302 degrees fahrenheit is not the maximum we select it we can actually select it to go from 212 degrees fahrenheit to 1112 degrees fahrenheit this is one of the highest for these tiny little cameras that you add on to a phone switching to radiometric mode takes 10 seconds or so so now it's in that range it can still measure the lower temperature at 25 degrees fahrenheit and also 80 for the flashlight and the accuracy in this is plus or minus two degrees. When you have a need to recalibrate on the upper right corner, there is a little shutter looking thing. If we click that, calibration successful. So we come out of this, we can also check out the gallery, which we saw already. Only photos, only video. We can select a few of them and delete them. Confirm, delete, close it out. We go to settings. There's the device details, which is a P2 Pro for iOS. We can do an automatic shutter changing video record you want to add sound to it i definitely like that feature video automatic shutter split screen which is just adding some lines on the screen let's do nine sections we can turn on a watermark display now on the lower right you see it says thermal master there's a watermark there you'll also notice that there are two vertical lines and two horizontal lines so there are nine sections in this video view and we can change it to you know four sections or what not, but I like zero sections. And also I don't like the watermark display. I prefer to not have it there all the time. You can enable burn protection. If it's too hot for the camera, it'll tell you and it'll shut itself off. The temperature unit, you can change between Kelvin, Celsius, or Fahrenheit. Temperature alarm, if you get too high, it'll tell you. You can correct the emissivity depending on what you are measuring. This is the bottom of my front door. Let me select a point right at the crack. That's 57 degrees or so. However, on the door, it's a little bit warmer, 59 degrees. Definitely a little bit of cold air is leaking in from there. Taking a look at my ceiling. If you look at the top, you can see that it's not quite even. Those bars right there are the studs that's running across the roof. If you look at the walls, same thing. You can actually see the studs through with the thermal imaging. Somehow right here, there is a cooler bar. So with thermal data, you can kind of get an idea where the studs are located as well. I have this load tester where I'm running around 123 watts through it right now. We can clearly see what is hot about it. This is a great chance to use the macro lens. So I can just snap this right on, remove the lens cover. And when you use the macro lens, you have to get really close. It's kind of fuzzy right now. So I need to get within an inch or so. Here we can see very closely in high detail of small objects on the PCB. Clearly this chip is getting very hot at 130 degrees. There is this trace that's going up 
underneath the heat sink. This is probably a current carrying one at 108 degrees. On the bottom, it seems like it's getting really hot over here where that chip is. And there is a FET that's sitting on the other side of this. And this is getting really hot, 122 degrees or so. But the fan is actually cooling things down enough so it doesn't overheat. Using a thermal camera is a great way to see if any of the components in your breaker panel are coming out of service or you overused it, it's time to replace the breaker. Usually what would happen is one of them gets a little bit too warm, even within the rated fuse rating. The maximum is 69 degrees right now and it's warming up more and more. This product has six different sets of heaters. We can use a thermal camera to clearly see all the heating elements in this thing. They each double back two times. And with this camera, we can see that all the heating elements are very similar. None of them are actually bigger than the other ones, but for the neck one, it's more horizontal. So there's two half loops here. And if I use the macro lens, it doesn't get much better because the fabric is completely flat. 10.3 grams with the macro lens, 14.7. I'm super happy with this thing. I think if you get it, you will be very happy with this as well. If you guys are interested in getting this thermal camera, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. <music>